Magnetic resonance imaging can successfully identify subclinical arthritis in children with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, according to Dr. Nikolai Zaribachev. In his study of 21 children, MRI identified 29 silent arthritis events. These events were later followed by clinical activity. Why was it important to conduct this study? Well, it was in 2004 where I had a patient with uh, psoriatic arthritis where we treated her with NSAIDs and after two months she presented uh, without having any disease symptoms and I was wondering how uh, it would look like in, on MRI and I was very shocked to see that the disease was progressing despite having any symptoms. Um, this was the start of the study and um, just to, to check if there is a silent disease progression in children. And the second thing what I was um, amazed about was to see, because it was only a wrist involvement, to see that the whole um, hand was involved. There was no joint free of arthritis in the whole hand. That was the point to, to check if there is a um, there are more than the wrist involved in, in those children or to check for a polyarticular course in children who present with oligoarthritis. How were you surprised by your results? Well, um, I think, yes, I was surprised. I was a bit of shock because um, my whole um, understanding of juvenile idiopathic arthritis changed since that time. Um, seeing that most of the patients do not have oligoarticular disease, most of them have polyarticular disease, and especially if you include uh, the uh, examination of the temporomandibular joints, which are apparently involved in 90% of the children, then you almost always have a polyarticular disease course. And I was very much surprised to see that disease is, or is able to progress silently without making any symptoms distracting joints, which I as a physician should have noticed, but I couldn't. What are the clinical implications of these findings for other doctors? I think um, we have um, um, remission criteria which are very good, um, but still they are only clinical. Um, they include only clinical um, symptoms and laboratory tests, and I think we should include imaging just to make sure that disease is not progressing because children do not have symptoms, that does not mean disease is uh, gone. And I think um, we can use imaging also for diagnosing the real extent of disease to uh, distinguish between oligo and polyarticular disease course because um, especially after the new ACR guidelines uh, in pediatric rheumatology, there are different treatment approaches the polyarticular disease is treated much more aggressively than oligoarticular would be. For Global Medical News Network, I'm Heidi Spleet.